Mm -hmm. And can you just quickly like go through a list of different classes that you um, take at the first year Mac and what those classes are? Mm -hmm. On um, Monday, okay, well, I'll just go through the classes. We have tutorial, and tutorial is where we learn our content. Um, and we, yeah, again, are in this group of eight people with a tutor, and that's where we learn, you know, the disease, the, the epidemiology of it, the, the pathophys of it, what investigations you order, and the treatment, signs and symptoms, stuff like that. And then we have uh, our IER class, IER, so interviewing, examining, and reasoning. And that is basically our clinical skills class where we learn how to take a history, how to take vitals, how to do a physical exam, listening to the heart, lungs, abdominal exam, lymph node exam, stuff like that. Um, and then on Wednesdays, which is our kind of flex day, we have communications class, which happens once a month. And that's basically how when we learn and practice talking to difficult patients or patients that are going through difficult scenarios that are a little bit more touching. This class is more just about Communicating. You don't only really have to bring knowledge or content. It's kind of just being empathetic and um, relating to a patient. So, for example, a patient who just found out that they have cancer. How, how do you approach that and how do you talk to them? Um, and then on some Wednesdays we have ProComp, which is our professional competencies class. And that's when we have usually a um, subject matter expert come in and explain a topic to us. And those topics can, can, can include um, health policies and the uh, Canadian government and how that incorporates health into it, um, learning about the history of the PA role, um, PA advocacy, how um, social media affects the profession and affects health care, um, and learning about the uh, interactions between PAs and NPs and what um, people are saying about PAs and their perspectives on them, so we are more rounded um, PAs and clinicians when we're working. And then we also have LGSs, which are large group sessions, and these include learning about ECGs or spirometry, uh, other investigations, or specifically maybe sometimes we have uh, when it's about a disease. So we've had congestive heart failure, LGSs, we've had um, maternal complications uh, during pregnancy, LGSs, and uh, yeah, and then, then we have, so tutorial twice a week and everything else is once a week, once every other week, um, and then sometimes we have staff meetings where the class meets with the staff to talk to them, um, that happens like maybe once every two months where we just talk about what's coming up, if we're talking about clerkship, if we're talking about CRE, or stuff like that. Okay, and how much of this is didactic, where you're being kind of spoon-fed information in a very traditional way? The LGSs and the ProCom sessions are somewhat didactic. Um, LG LGSs are definitely di didactic. ProCom is, they definitely motivate or they encourage group participation. So there is a, a, a teacher or a um, lecturer at the front who is giving us a lecture with PowerPoint slides, but a lot of the time we will break up into groups and talk about a topic, and that happens throughout the entire class. It happens almost every class. So uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's PBL, but it is a little bit more interactive. It's not you're just sitting there taking notes. They don't really encourage taking notes during ProCop. It's more of a listening and understanding and talking to your peers about it, talking to the, to the um, to the facilitator, um, but that's that's kind of the the majority of our didactic portion during LGS and ProComp. Um, other than that, IER or the clinical skills class is a lot about. It's somewhat didactic in the sense that the preceptor and the preceptors are usually either working PAs um, that have been working for a different amount of time, or a doctor or a retired doctor, someone who's who knows the clinical material well. Um, they'll explain it to us, explain what the exam looks like and what's expected, and but then it's a lot of practice. That's what the class is for, mostly practice. Um, and then communications is more just practicing as well. Okay, and you also um, have uh, longitudinal placements or LPs. So what is that and um, what do you enjoy about it? Yeah, so the LPs, longitudinal placements, are placements that the students organize um, and they are basically four half days, so that's, say, 
four hours of a placement four times would be one longitudinal placement. So like a total of 16 hours. And they can be in any specialty um, with any PA or doctor. And we organize them, we find the contacts, and then we put them together and schedule a time. So I really enjoy these because it, can let, it allows you to kind of explore anything that you're interested in. So um, if you are really interested in um, uh, geriatrics, and you can do a LP in geriatrics, or if you're really interested in general surgery and being in surgery and like talking to surgeons and seeing what their life is like, then you can go there and, and, and do an LP there. Um, I've personally done a LP in family medicine, in the cardiac ICU, and in emergency hospital. And all three were, were great. I had amazing preceptors for all three, um, and they were all with PAs. Um, and they've been all been working for a while. And I really enjoyed the time that I spent with them more than anything, I think. Like, they all understand where I am in the PA program. They've all, I think have a lot of experience with students. So they were really good at teaching me things and allowing me to do things and giving me kind of um, a window into their life. But they also took time to just talk to me about what they go through day to day and things that they think about, things that they kind of encounter and their perspective on the profession, on the future of the profession. We had really good conversations in, in the time that I was with them. And I really enjoyed that aspect of just kind of they kind of became my role models in, in a sense of like one day I want to be like them in, in advocating for the profession but also just being a great PA. Like they were all just very respected and nurses or physicians all just let them do what they needed to do because they trusted them and they um, had a really good bond together and I think that's one like a really big goal of mine or a big goal of everyone should be just to, to integrate well into the healthcare team. And just by doing that, you're advocating for PAs because um, if your physician likes you, if your healthcare team likes you, then they'll say good things. And um, just to sort of wrap up our discussion about PA school, what, uh, what do you enjoy about going to McMaster's PA program? Yeah, uh, I really enjoy the people. Um, I'm lucky enough to be with a lot of great people. I've become really good friends with these people. With, with the students that I'm with. Um, we've bonded over a lot of, you know, hardships and stress, but also we've gone out and, and hung out at people's houses and it's just kind of, we all know what we're going through. No one knows what you're going through like a PA student when you're also a PA student. So um, that's one of my really favorite parts of, of Mac, especially because compared to uh, U of T, it's distance learning. So you don't really see your classmates that often. You see them in the residential blocks, which happen you know, once in a while. Um, so I really value that face-to-face -face contact. So I see my tutorial group twice a week for three hours each, so six hours with my tutorial group. I see my clinical skills group, which is a different group, um, three hours a week. And then I see communications once a week. Then we have pro comps where I see everybody. So we see each other pretty often compared to, other pro, uh, to, compared to U of T. Um, but even compared to undergrad, you, you see them often, so you, and you get to know them really well. And I think I value that. I also really, really value the preceptors and the t tutors that we've had. They've all been just really great. And I think I've been especially lucky because I keep getting paired or put into groups with people that I think that are just amazing. Um, they advocate for practical and clinical content. They advocate for our um, learning and they want us to be prepared for next year and clerkship and prepared for the real world. They're not just doing this just because it's something to do. They're really invested in us and I really appreciate that and I think I will be that much of a better PA because I've had experiences with those tutors and preceptors. Um, and I think, yeah, th those Two things are definitely huge parts of it, and also McMaster is just also kind of my home. I did my four years there. I'm from Hamilton, so um, it's really easy for me. I don't, I don't have to adjust to a new school in any way. I, I have my set places that I like to study, places that I like to get food. I know where the dance studio is. It kind of all just, I didn't have to change much of my life um, when I came to the program. So 
um, yeah, it, it was probably the best decision I could have made. Um, I also didn't really have, I don't apply to the other schools, but uh, 